Alrighty. So we are ready to go. We are going to be doing some mixed media eggs today. Um, I am using some paper mache eggs, but you can use the little plastic ones that you can find anywhere. You may need to um, roughen them up a little with some um, uh, fine grit sandpaper and then paint them with some um, uh, primer. Uh, if you're using the little plastic one. The recording is on, yes. Um, so you may need to find you, that you need to do that. Sorry, I have to look behind the computer at something. Um, need to check. Make sure if something is there. It is. We're good. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um. So you you'll need to check that, um, or or you'll need to um, to get either the little plastic ones or I got these little paper mache ones, um, and you can get these at Hobby Lobby and Michaels or any other kind of craft store kind of thing. Especially this time of year, they're on sale too. Um, but we can there's all sorts of fun things that we'll be able um, to do with these. So. Um, we're just going to have a little bit of fun today. So we're just going to play little mixed media stuff, you know, use kind of stuff that you have around. Um, there's all sorts of mixed media um, materials available now, even in the um, uh, chain craft stores, uh, because mixed media it has become such uh, so much bigger uh, within the industry these days as people still love to play with paper, but they're not necessarily wanting to do photo albums and stuff. Um, I've always had a great time with mixed media, and when I was taking some time off, um, looking back at some of my old stuff, what I was really doing from the very beginning was much more mixed media stuff than just um, scrapbooking. So kind of getting back into a little bit more of that has been, has been a lot of fun. And so, um, so we're going to play with this today. And um, see where it goes. Um, <clears throat> whether or not I'm going to be having regular uh, live shows or not is still to be determined. And we can talk about that a little closer to the end. Or I may um, post something about it. Um, but I don't want to take up a bunch of time doing that right now. So um, this recording will stay here on YouTube um, for you to view afterwards. It will also be over on linked over on my website. So, anyway, let's go ahead and switch cameras and start to play. Alrighty, as I said, I'm just using these little paper mache eggs. They're all good to go, ready to go. Um, and I can just paint them, gesso them. Um, there's any number of things that we can do. I have some stuff pulled out. Um, I have some gesso, some um, glue and seal, which is a range of product, but there's all sorts of different medias that you can use. And um, so you can use other, um, Tim Holtz has some collage medium. He has an in matte, vintage, and crackle. And Trevor's calling me. Let me just put silence for a second and let me answer this. I apologize. All right, I'm back. Sorry, he just had um, had something he had to tell me about. So, um, anyway, <clears throat> where was I? Oh, so there's any number of things, mediums that you can use. Um, any number of manufacturers that this is um, something that dries clear, except in the case of the vintage one from from Tim Holtz. These are really nice. This comes in a set. It's kind of, you can get them larger, but you can get these in a set from Ranger um, to where you can kind of test it out. So like I said, I have glue and seal. I've also got some texture paste. Um, and again, these are Ranger because that's what I have. 
but um, you can also go to the art supply section of both Michael's and um, Hobby Lobby, and they have it in um, other brands as well. So medium is a pretty easy eat medium, just so that kind of thing are um, art supplies that are readily available in um, all sorts of places. I, for all I know, Walmart probably even <laughs> has some as well. <coughs> so um, uh, does anybody else have any problems with the sound? Because sometimes it might be in your end. Um, so if anybody else is having difficulties with the sound, somebody in the in the chat is just mentioning um, sound problems. Um, another thing that I've used is I got a package. It's a rather large package of um, just little clear and AB um, jewels. So they don't have a color to them. They just have a kind of an iridescence. Yeah, um, Dick Blix is another, or any art supply store is going to carry that kind of thing. If you have a university in your town, um, I know that University of Washington here has, their bookstore has some of the best art supplies, even though University of Washington isn't known for its art program, but they have um, a lot of art supplies at their bookstore. Okay, I have not changed anything on any of my settings for the sound. So there's nothing that I can change that's going to improve the sound for you. I have not changed anything, Kathy Girl, Girly Girl. Everything is actually how I have had it set up for years and years and years. So um, not a lot that I can change at this point. Um, so I apologize. You may need to, yeah, just because somebody else is working great doesn't mean, necessarily mean it's going to work. I know this sounds kind of harsh, but... Just because it works for somebody else doesn't mean that it's going to be the same because we may be um, off of different um, servers through YouTube. So, yeah, see, we have other people who have fi sounds fine. So, uh, th this is just comes from years and years and years and years of frustration to where we've totally stopped show trying to fix sound for a couple people. And so, I... I I apologize if it's not working for you, and I wish there was something I could do to improve it for you. So, anyway, um, the other things that I'm going to be using, I just want to keep on this before I totally lose my train of thought. Um, I'm, I've gotten some little lace here. You can use any kind of scrap lace, that sort of thing that you may have. Um, so, you just want to look at the scale in comparison to your eggs and stuff. You don't want to use stuff that's too big. And I've got this other one as well. So then, you know, other kinds of lace. Then I've pulled out some other things to where I have some um, uh, fabric that's real thin kind of a woven fabric. I may use that. I have some tissue paper. I have some some gauze. This is some gauzy type stuff. It just happens to be a dark gray black. Um, I have some lace. We're just going to kind of play. I also have some flowers. I have some moss and I was going for this stringier kind of moss, but I also have some other things. Moss. I've got some paper flowers. I have some fabric flowers. You know, I just ran around for a few minutes beforehand. I have some, a stencil that I might use. I have my um, indigo blue. Um, what do they call this stuff again? Uh, it's, it's basically gold leaf stuff. So we may play with that. And I pulled out all of my... Um, Lindy sprays, so we can use those, and you can kind of use those almost like watercolor too. Um, and I did pull out my watercolors. This is one of the little Prima sets of the watercolors. So basically, anything you feel like, you can uh, you can just play with it. So. Um, 
all sorts of just you know if you got it around the house probably can use it so you're just going to need some some water some brushes um that sort of thing and like i said the the medium um the gesso and you would go from there now one of the projects one of the eggs i did do in advance and that was with the um uh the little jewel the flat back jewel things um and i did that because this took a lot this took about an hour to glue these all on here and what i've done here is i've just randomly glued onto one of these naked ones and i just used hot glue because it was the easiest <laughs> and the quickest um but you can use whatever your preferred glue is so I just covered the entire egg with the jewels. I thought this came out so cool. And then what I did is then I just took black acrylic paint and I just painted and I did a small section at a time, but I just painted it and then took a paper towel and I was just wiping off um, to clean off the gem. So then it became almost like grout black grout because I want it but you could do it any kind of color you wanted I wanted it just to have that black kind of elegant feel and then I just took some ribbon some um and I did it in the black and tied a bow and then just glued on some little flowers to make a very elegant egg it's very sparkly so <coughs> so um the one thing about doing little eggs like this with mixed media is it's a great way to just kind of um, play with some techniques. Now, grant you, it's a three-dimensional element, so you know it's not like it's a flat piece of paper, but it's not a huge investment. Um, if one of them doesn't work out, and it also doesn't have a lot of time involved, this is probably the most time-intensive because of having to... Um, glue all those guys down and getting it all to fit you know the beauty of having these multiple sizes is i could fit in what i needed to fit in but anyway that was the f that's the first little egg that i did and i did this one off camera just because of the uh the time involved with gluing that on but um the next one we're just going to go ahead and uh, start putting stuff on so I'm thinking maybe using some of these and I went for ones that a didn't have a lot of um, scale to them but also ones that could go and get who could easily attach onto here so I'm thinking I want to do a row of that and then a row above it of this one and go around it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this down with my um, my glue and seal so now with mixed media one of the things I have found that works best for people is to just kind of you're gonna have to let go a little bit of it being perfect sometimes the best ones end up being so awesome because you, you got to let it just be a little bit messy. Now, for me, that's a challenge because those of you who've, who've um, watched my live shows, followed my, anything on my videos, that sort of thing, I tend to be, maybe it's my architecture background, I don't know, but I tend to like things all tidy and lined up and I don't like them. I mean, even just right now, it's like, okay, that's not quite lining up exactly the way I want it to. Um, but I, I, I've had to figure out how to let go of always wanting everything to just be absolutely perfect. Because with mixed media, sometimes just letting it happen um, is more successful. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going about a little past halfway up. To just and I just put some of the the medium on there. This just spot there, you know, and I can go over the top of it too to attach it down. Because then we're gonna just use my heat gun to. And don't be afraid to really slather it on; it'll dry. Now I did bring some gloves up for when I'm doing the messy stuff. Some uh um. 
for when I'm doing all the icky stuff that I don't want to have to scrub off my hands. Um, so feel free to wear, wear gloves, have some paper towels. I have a dedicated towel that I just used. So I'm just going to attach Don't worry if it's not straight. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to put a row of this smaller one around the top. This one overlaps just a tad better. Stick some of this down underneath and then brush it down. It doesn't dry instantaneously, so you can kind of mush things around a little bit if you need to. And it, the, yeah, the white on the craft is actually even pretty, just leaving, even if I just wanted to leave it the, the plain. Okay, I kind of want that to stick down, so tap it down. You may have to help, help it along as you, uh, as it dries. We're going to dry it with a heat gun. So let me grab that. Sometimes it's easier to get it to stick down again once it starts to dry. It's almost like it gets a little tackier that way. But you know what? If it sticks up a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, come on. It's just my fingers are now sticky. And some have said I have cast iron fingers, so... Don't feel that you have to hold on to it the way I do. I'm going to take this little wheel out right here. I think that's part of my problem. Oh, come on. My scissors are getting stuck there. I need a new pair of Tim scissors because these are getting kind of dull because I use them on everything. The other thing you can do is you can glue this down with maybe like some hot glue in advance. And then you don't have to rely on the glue and seal to hold it in place as well. So. And I'm going to gesso over the top of it so it really it's going to have another layer that will hold it down. So if it's not perfect, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The problem with Tim Holtz scissors is they have a serrated edge. So I don't know that you can sharpen them. But, you know, they're not that outrageously expensive. That if And the, I use so many of them. And then, then the ones, what I do is I put a little yarn tie on the handle. And if my family knows if it has a yarn tie in the handle, they can use them anywhere in the house. 
So they just know that if the scissors don't have that yarn tied, do not use those or mom might come after you. Okay, it's getting a little toasty. So I will lay it down. We're just going to let it get nice and pretty much dry. There is clear gesso. Yes, there is. And you could use that instead of medium if you want. Gesso generally comes in clear, white, and black. This Dina Wakely medium, you can get this in these tubes from Ranger. Um, and it comes in, you can get that in a kind of a test pack that's got those color, it's got black and white in it. I think it might have clear in it as well. I'm not really sure. Yeah, here's the scissors out. And also his tonic scissors and stuff are now have a gray handle instead of the red. Okay, that's close enough to dry. So that I can now gesso it. This is almost out. So now I'm just going to gesso up and over the top of everything. And by gessoing over it, and then we can, you can spray it. There's all sorts of things we can do. This is kind of a technique that's been made popular in recent years. It's been around forever, but in recent years it's been made po popular by Finnabar and you make these assemblages and then you um, basically gesso them and spray them and stuff. So it doesn't matter what color. So you could be using scrap lace that's, you know, colored if you want. It doesn't have to be in white. Now gesso can be a little more challenging to wash off your hands. <laughs> so just be aware, I probably should have put my gloves on, but I just let my hands get all messy. So. <laughs> Come on. I have to get my jar of it out of oh, there's still stuff in there. Okay. And just so tries very quickly but it the thing is is gesso is essentially a primer and so it's kind of like priming the walls when you're painting um this isn't just white acrylic this is is something that it's going to give you a more opaque finish than just if you were to um just paint white acrylic on there i want to make sure i get it down in all my little Nooks and crannies. So see here right on the back here where it's not matching up. It's not super obvious that I didn't match it up. So. Yep, the gray scrubby, the, the famous Ranger gray scrubby. When I went to Ranger U years and years ago, the bathrooms there at Ranger just had those scrubbies in, in there. So, um, but now if I were using the little plastic eggs instead of these, what I would do is I would first, because they usually open for goodies inside, um, I would glue them closed and then I would put a layer of, um, I, I roughen them up a little bit with some fine grit sandpaper 
and then I would paint them with the gesso before I started attaching anything else over them um, because you'll want to get that gesso on where that over the plastic first and then layer on top and then they would be at the point like where these little paper mache eggs are so let's go ahead and get this dry probably should Just get it nice and dry. And then we're going to paint it a color. And then I'm going to spray or brush on a little bit of accent into it. And then we're going to highlight some. So and then we'll do another one. decide to do a show on Wednesday we may do more of these because I'm um, the um, mystery book club project that we started um, on the last during the last class on Thursday was it um, I'm just gonna go straight to video to finish that one up I'm thinking maybe doing the live shows just as playtime for the time being and just do the rest as a um, straight to video. I catch less flack that way. Oops. Cut the cord on my chair. It's all on the ground. Jump. Uh, let's see. Lois will be happy. I'm going to paint it blue, kind of a robin's egg blue. Let's see, now we just got it kind of. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of blue on there, dry it again. I'm just going to paint it all over in this light blue. But see, if I were trying to go straight to this acrylic paint, it would not be giving you the kind of coverage. So and these are just inexpensive get them for like 99 cents a squeeze bottle at um, big box stores Walmart they even have it over at the hardware store here local to me this stuff dries pretty quickly so I'm gonna stick a finger up there Hold it. Just a bit. Whoops. Well, I just got paint on my tripod. That's okay. Not going to hurt it. And again, I'm not really worried about getting like little fingerprinties on it and stuff like that. So just want to make sure it's covered.
We'll dry this, and then we're going to start adding um, in egg expensive. Oh, joy. Well, that's a groaner. Now I make sure that I don't have my non-stick mat underneath here. This, um, not non-stick, uh, this is a non-stick mat. I don't have this guy underneath my cutting mat because you will warp it by doing heat on top of it. So make sure that you don't have that there. While I'm drying, I'm looking for my blue spray. I have all these sprays, but I so infrequently use them. Silver days. This one. All right. Now I'm going to brush this on my Lindy's. You can spray it on too, but I just want to keep it more focused around the center area. So I'm not going to spray it on, though I can check out the color. Yeah, because, well, maybe I'll spray a little bit, so just so it gets it a little bit. I just don't want to get it too much, but I want the little sploppies on there. But, well, now I got a really good mess. Yeah. But I do want to use my brush. I can use it more. You could also use some um, uh, watercolors for stuff like this. So I just want to add some more intensive color. And I'm just going to be sloppy with this. Just kind of like where the lace is, just to kind of give some some definition to the lace. You could do a contrast color. You can, like I'm doing here, just slightly darker. I kind of want to blend that in. I don't want it to be super distinct line. Yeah, this is giving a little accent there. I wish I hadn't sprayed it because that gave it a little bit more than I wanted. So now I haven't used these probably in two years, and that just sprayed right off the bat. It was cool. Let's see, it is purple. Let's see. Probably should brush my wash my brush off a little bit so I don't get the blue and the purple. Yeah, I like having that little bit of adding a little bit of that purpley to it. Just a little accenting color. And you can add more layers, more colors as you want to. Let's dry this a little bit. Let's see if we want to add any more to it.
Well, the spray lasts a long time. The thing is, is um, it, what I like about Lindy's, and I have no affiliation, nothing to do with Lindy's, but I do love the fact that they don't clog up. Other brands I've had, I've had to throw them away because they clog up. Or I have to use them exclusively with a brush because the spray just, they won't spray any longer. So. You could also do this exact thing with some watercolors if you wanted to. Now I'm going to throw, I think, one more color in here. I want to bring something a little bit darker in dark chocolate truffle. Ew, that sounds really good. And then I've got peg leg pink purple. I don't know if these colors are still available or not. So. Okay. The nice thing about having just a towel that just sits on your lap is it acts both as an apron, but it also gives you the um, a place to like just easily wash things up. Oh, oh, this one's a dabber, but this has got some metallic in it. That's probably too big of a brush. So this has some kind of brownish kind of copper kind of tone to it. So I can just add some layers to give it a little bit other definition you know what and if any time you go oh god i just turned that into mud i don't like it you know you can always just paint over it again dry it and paint over it with your gesso again and redo the color it's really quite easy in that regard i do like how that's come out Now, the printable vellum, one thing with that is, Wendy, is that the vellum is really stiff, and it, you may find it's a little bit more challenging with having it stiff. And the other thing to be aware of with inkjet, I test it out, because many times if you get inkjet ink, it depends on your printer and your manufacturer and all that stuff, but many times when you're you're printing out papers like mine when you get them wet you may find they run just do a little test first um not all inks do but it could okay so we'll let this cool off just a little bit Um, let's see. and then I have some gold, just some metallic gold acrylic. This, this happens to be the, uh, Dina Wakely ones. So I'm going to clean out one of my fat brushes.
And I'm just going to kind of, I didn't get too much on there. Didn't want quite that much, so I can then take my little towel. Wipe some of it off. I almost want to be totally a dry brush. So just barely touching on it. Okay, so then I can also add a little paint water to that. This brush isn't going to be good for flicking. But let's see if I can get some of it to flick. Flick some gold on there. Try not to flick it onto my computer too. So that, and I hit it with my brush, so I'll wipe that up. But so I just got a little, some little flicks of the gold on there. So let's go ahead and dry that. So then I'm going to take some little pearls and put on there. Okay, that's pretty close to dry. So I've already got my hot glue gun fired up. And then I've got this, some of those little flat back pearls. So we're going to just glue some of these on with my hot glue. I apologize. The arms of my chair tend to hit my um, table when I turn. So I apologize. I'm wiggling my table and thus the camera. Hot. That was hot. <laughs> I have cast iron fingers, yes, but. <laughs> so right at that seam of my two ribbon or two laces. I'm just laying. And these don't have to be. These are flat pearls. You can use non-flat pearls. You can also put ribbon. This would be really pretty with ribbon around it. Pearls are not, they're a little bit higher, bigger scale than what I wanted, but we'll, we'll go with them. And we'll adjust accordingly. If I really decide I don't like them, I can pull them off and do a ribbon around. Whoops. We went around on me. But I can also add a little more on that. I don't like that. Okay, so do I want a second row of them? Hmm. Let's see, I got some smaller ones too. Got too many goodies in this joint. That's it. That's the problem. So are these white or green? It's green. So then I've got these little round ones, and I think I'll just make a row on top and bottom. These are smaller in scale. I like that. That looks cute. Let's 
see any faith you go, uh, this isn't, I'm, I'm making a mess. This isn't working for me. Guess what? You don't have that much time put into it. And certainly not much in the way of materials, so. So, I decide, do I want to go with another row? I think just the two rows is good. So we got those two little rows, and then I think I want to add some little flowers on there. These are some um, Kaisercraft ones. They have little wires on them, so I always take the little wires and make a little flat little blobble doodle. So, where is the seam? I'm thinking maybe if I put this by the seam. That one seems a little bigger than I want, so you just mush it around a little. That one's sticking out quite that far. Yeah, that one's not working for me. Not one of these guys. See, I keep losing my seam. You see, that kind of is overpowering too. It's taking over, it's too big. How's it going to be? That one might be too big too. Some little tiny ones. Those are more like it. Just kind of bluish ones. There's these guys that I just have to. I have found I'm really my preference. After doing this for so many years, I'm really getting into where I like buying, you know, the flower sets like these, and then doing something with that. Let's grab some of that moss. It's kind of Spanishy moss stuff. It's stringier. <laughs> so we can take and put some of this stuff on there. Ooh, that's a good little curly pleat piece. Those always look kind of cute behind there. As you know, I'm not the biggest fan of hot glue for things other than exactly like this. To where we're just adding embellishment stuff on. Then I have no problems with using hot glue for it. Okay, so I've just added some little bit of moss stuff just to give some texture. And then one of these little spritzies of So it's coming along. It looks kind of cute. And this, these are like little tiny blue flowers. I hope Lois is happy with all this blue. I know Lois loves her blue. A sprig of this little white stuff right here. And the 
last one down over here. Let's give it a little asymmetry. kind of fiddle around till you got how you like how it's all kind of coming together so we've got some cute little just some little flowers on there it's all just kind of it's got some some little gold some glitz it's in the blues you can add a little ribbon on there. I still think these flowers are a little bit big. Let me look at it again. Just a little much. Oh, see, it doesn't look quite so bad now. I think it's still a little bit. I want these guys. Oh, still too big. Okay, let's go with these. These would be perfect. A shorter stem on it. Yeah, I think mean, that makes for a really cute little shabby egg. So, well, there, we got a couple to start with. So we got our first few little eggs. Let me get this put back over in my bag. So, put this so I don't toast myself. All right, so for my next egg, I think I'm going to do something with a little bit of my, um, these guys out the way. Um, I'm going to use, um, this is just a Prima, um, a little trickier on a round something so find a section just we can try stenciling this on there or we can just try a texture i'm going to take some of my texture paste and i have a palette knife here somewhere Try taking some texture paste. Now, I haven't tried this on the egg before, so we'll see if we can get some of this to work. This might be a little larger than what I want to do. I might just put some of this on. I just want to make it real textury. It's kind of like icing a cake. can do that. Hmm. I like that. This stuff is really the consistent of a powder sugar frosting. This one I'd have to let dry. I'm not liking that at all. Okay, never mind. I 
I need to grab a smaller stencil is what I need to do. It's okay to decide something's not going to work the way you want it to. These will work, and these will make me very happy. I think I used this one the other day. It has these little dragonflies on it, so I can take that little dragonfly. And I can add my little dragonfly on there. I'm going to dry that one before I do the next one. And then I have a really cool idea of how we can make these dragonflies stand out. Now you don't want to get too close or stay in one spot too long when you're drying your texture paste because it will tend to want to um, bubble. So I'm just going to hold that here. This may take a little practice doing this on this 3D egg. I'm going to let it flex a little. Lost his little tail. There you go. I need to clean some of it off a little bit. First one works so great. I just clean some of the excess off. They don't have to be perfect. We're letting go of perfect today. The arm of my chair keeps grabbing my heat gun and making it off. Let's do a couple more on here. There we go. I just got to get the angle right on it. From the outside towards the center. I'm just kind of out of play with some of this stuff to figure out what's going to work best. it off a little bit but again I'm not looking for perfect okay I think I do one more and then I have something else that I'm going to grab Well, I'm glad this is giving a, you a lot of you some ideas. That's typically my intent with stuff like this. Is not is yes, I can give you something that you can follow along exactly and make, 
and that is absolutely not a problem but I also always hope to spark some ideas for you to do stuff yourself as well okay let's try that one And then I gotta go grab something real quick. I was hoping this one was a little bit smaller. I have a teeny tiny little dragonfly stamp that I can also use. I'm going to paint over it, so I'm just going to do a test because it's going to get painted over because I'm going to um, gesso this. So I just want to test it out because then it gets painted over. So if it doesn't work, it's okay. Oh, it does work. How oh, cool. Alrighty. That's going to work good. Okay, so now I can go ahead and gesso over everything. Let's see if we have enough left in here. I took my gesso, so it's not in my, my cart, so I'm just going to use some black gesso. We're just going to do it in black then. Because that's what we have right now. Oh, don't run away. I'm trying to grab this. So we can bring the texture out of those little dragonflies here in just a sec.
Okay, and then I just gotta go. Let's see what yeah. See if I can find. This is the one that I'm thinking of, but we'll see if it works. So I've just got some white ink, so not the one I was thinking of, but hmm. not sure I like the white, but I will reserve judgment for a moment. This little tissue can be up in the air. Got some of those on there. See if I can dry that. Yeah, I've got some, I've got the gilding flakes. I just um, I was thinking of doing that on the little um dimensional ones, but I'm, I think I'm going to use the wax instead. You're not judging yet? Thank you. Yeah, give, give me a minute. I'll figure something out here. I always do. So, okay, let's go with... It's not the cleanest water, so it's probably not the best idea. So I'm just going to put some paint. Peaching it up a little bit. Uh, 
too much. More water in there. And I'm using watercolors because I don't want it to kind of color the whole part. Um, yeah. Well, that wasn't the right ink. <laughs> yeah, see, it's just smearing my ink. So I thought it was going to color just my white. Okay, well, that didn't work. I couldn't find my white VersaFine. Okay. So it was going to discolor the white, but that didn't work, so. Cut. Obviously water-based ink. See, you're just getting to, see, this is what I go through. This is like, let's just play. So, uh. It doesn't always work. So we're going to punch and we're going to do something different. And I'm going to take some of home. Always have a backup idea. Okay, I'm going to remove these because I don't want them to get all icky. And I'm going to work. I'm going to use Cockabell's Coral. I'm so glad I brought gloves up. Yeah, but it was like, I was hoping it would dry enough that I could color it, but I don't know where, I was looking for my white, my white permanent ink, but. We'll just play, we'll turn it into something. If, if nothing else, I'll turn it into mud. I'm going to be sparkly anyway. I gotta give it the good college try before I just say next. <laughs> okay, so that's one color. Let's put another color on there. Maybe something I don't know. Saltwater taffy, that's one of my favorites. Not adding a lot to it. Bucket of blood red? No, I don't think so. It just doesn't sound very eastery, does it? Ramblin' Rose Pink. Let's try that saltwater taffy or whatever it was on there. So the beauty of these is even though it's a black, we painted the egg black, the sparkle is still showing.
And that was the first time I've ever had one of those rub up on me. Fortunately, I already had a lot of the color on there. This actually is going to look kind of cool. I'm liking it. It's getting to be a really cool iridescent -y pink. It might be a little bit too brown anyway. Okay, I'll set this one all aside too. Those two need both need to be unplugged. Not showing on camera, but it's coming out to be this really kind of cool color. I'm actually pretty stoked. Of course, I'm actually also very sparkly. I'm so glad I brought gloves up. See, I brought gloves up. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, black and a blood red is a Halloween color right now. Okay, my little dragonflies. Will eventually pop out here when we wax them a little bit. I'm going with a this one's called Blazing Sun. So this is just gonna give some some golden shine to it. Ooh I love it. It's really coming out cool now. Well it's running all over the place. Dry it real quick. It's a Game of Thrones egg. I'll give this one to Trevor. He's totally Game of Thrones, dude. So. We listened to Game of Thrones on audio when we were driving down to Arizona and then again when we were driving to from uh, New Hampshire. I haven't listened to the whole thing yet. And that's just the first book. It's just way too much for me. I just don't have time. Ooh. It's actually coming out quite cool. And you can do this with one color or tons of colors. You know, it. you don't have to do it with, you know, a bunch like I'm doing. So if you just have a, one or two colors, you just add multiple coats. To it. I think that's going to be sufficient, so we'll leave it at that. I may be forever sparkly. This has come out really cool. It's kind of got a golden pink color with the black undertone. I love it. Okay, and now we're going to take some paper towel and I'm going to take my um, some of my wax now this this is we use gilding paste years and years and years and years and years ago because um, there just didn't used to be anything else available but now um, everybody's coming out with them now this one is one of the the Finnabar ones from Prima
kind of want to be almost like a dry brush thing because we're just going to I just want it subtle so I just want to wax just the you could also touch this up with just some acrylic um, paint and it kind of dry brush on it but I know a lot of you have the waxes and paste the gilders wax paste stuff from years ago you can just add some mineral spirits to it to rejuvenate them if they've kind of dried up a bit you know it's just subtle just giving it some little bit of extra color on there there's one more Oops. just adding a little subtlety to it don't need a lot just add added a little bit of glitz to those so they stand out a little bit and then I think I want to try something with this brush again yes that is my cat thinking that she has to come in here right now she just has to okay I haven't tried this before so bear with me what if we did black on top of it hmm I'm going to try it with this, but I'm going to try it on the paper towel first. Here's, um, I've never tried stamping with this stuff before. Okay, the most annoying cat on the planet. Let's try it on here. Kind of, sort of works. Not great. Okay, well, that was an idea. So I thought, ooh, it'd be cool if we could stamp those on there. But it's not wanting to do that. So I could use, I could use some acrylic on there and do it. that we're going to go for more subtle so get rid of the color box pull in the versifine and the jet black so the black is showing up now again we're going for subtle with this one more and then we're going to put some there's one put one more up here there's one there so we got those little subtle guys oh, any more yeah one more down right there let's turn him upside down cool okay that's working for me it's nice and just really subtle elegant and subtle and then we're going to go with pull some ribbon Pink 
ribbon here. Let's get past the crunkle part. And that's pretty bow. Yeah, it used to be my kids, now it's my cats. Those of you been around for a while know that my kids used to come in, interrupt. It's like people used to get mad about that too. It's like, okay, so well, whatever. that on the top and have a, a flower so then the decoration on there is kind of subtle not my favorite not my best but we rescued it after a couple of starts that were on here not as successful as I would have liked we did manage to rescue them though until it cools a little but you know <laughs> Christine in his own little way he did appear because he called me <laughs> and he knew I was doing a show <laughs> a little nugget so we got it in this the subtle pink with a little that doodah on it and I'm gonna throw a little couple of these guys um, these little things that I get a little they a little tiny ball things on A little bit of moss, as we always say, does wonders for just about anything. There. So we got a cute little shabby eggs, got little golden um, dragonflies on there, some little black dragonflies on there, and he's a pretty little egg. Kind of fits in. I must be in a dark place right now. These are all coming out a little bit darker, red and light and shabby. Yeah. Uh, 
So I'm happy. I think we got time for like one more. I always hate to get rid of this because I always want to use it to make like flowers. That makes kind of a cute little flower just out of my out of my paper towel. Scrunch it all up in the middle. So I got distracted by my paper towel. <laughs> Easily distracted. <laughs> yeah, see, so I can use this then for something else. Kilo flower. You can also die cut your paper towels into um, into things like flowers and such. Okay. All right. So let's grab another egg out. Exactly. Let's see what else goodies do I have in here? Oh, I know what I wanted to take some of this. Lace. The scissors are getting bad. Maybe. I don't know if I can just attach it up. Probably can just do something like that. I don't think I can do it that way. But. I want more of the lacy parts. I'm kind of going to chop this into smaller sections. I think. I'm going to attach these on. Yeah, that'll work. I'm just going to cut this into smaller sections since we're using a 3D object and cut out from the, there's so much netting on these laces. I'll just get out some of the lacier parts. I'm not being super careful how I'm putting them apart. I'm just cutting them into somewhat smaller sections so that I can attach them. And then I'm going to get out my glue and seal again. And I'll use that one for black. Probably not when I want to use that. So I can use soap and water to wash it. I 
This is my favorite brush. The Hippler handle is just falling apart. The brush itself is still great. But they don't make them anymore, so. I'm just going to kind of decoupage, mod podge the lace on. Which is why I did it in the smaller sections. Oh, my pink fingers. <laughs> Paint's falling off the handle of the... Probably should have gone and washed my hands first, but... We're going to gesso over it. i got to find my white gesso, though, because I'm not doing this one in black gesso. I could probably just paint over this one. Maybe it doesn't need to be gessoed. If I were just doing this without, I would go wash my hands. <laughs> I should have. I should have some wipes in here so I could clean that pink off. But Oh, well, it's fine. We'll figure it all out. Use these little pieces to fill in the spots where I need it. Okay, cover the bag with some lace, and one piece right over there. There we go. I can practice off my fingertips. I may have pink fingers forever. It's not as much fun anymore because Sarah doesn't get as embarrassed as she used to. So somebody had suggested either earlier I'd go out with Sarah then and
Wendy, I'm not understanding the problem you had. Okay, so you did the, use the hockey tape to make the album. And then you said just don't use it to put album together and then wrap entire album with cardstock. I'm, I guess I'm not understanding what your the problem is. Dried eggs and hands. Oh, you guys are doing a whole bunch of groaners. You guys are bad. Oh, well, you don't want to cover the joint with the card stop. You leave just the tape at the card at the joint, but you don't cover th you don't cover the joint with the card stock. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear on that. You don't want to cover the joint with the card stock. You just run the card stock up to the the edge and leave just the tape at the corner. Yeah, no, you don't want to cover the joints. I apologize. That that I should have made that clearer. Because I didn't have one covered yet, so you didn't see that you run it up to the corner, but not over the corner. Yeah, it's going to crack the card stack. Anytime you go over that that um, joint, it is going to crack. Guaranteed. I'll show that here. After I get this one down, I, wanna, I, I, I do want to um, explain that. So let me just let this dry. But I do want to make sure that nobody else does that same sort of thing. So, okay, I'm going to let that dry a little bit real quick. And interrupt. Okay. Here is the hockey stick tape on my joints. So what I'm going to want to do when I put that, that paper on, you're going to want to run it to about like 16th and eighth of an inch from the joint and cover it and out this way and from there over. You don't want to cover over the joint with your cardstock because it's not changing anything um if you do if you run the paper over the joint it's still going to stress it and it's still going to crack it so you definitely just want to run it up to and that's the idea of the paper being or the tape being there is it covers the joint so your paper doesn't have to Okay, so I've got to more find some white chips. Ah, I just so one jar to well, can we get it open? I do not have the strongest of hands anymore. Well, I did find my Momento white ink that I was looking for before. Let's see, do I just have some white acrylic? Okay, I just have some white acrylic. I'm just going to paint it with the white acrylic. It doesn't have to be the gesso. This one. Home from his hockey 
hockey game. What the hell what? Ah, uh, just keeps chipping off of this thing. Oh, my favorite brush! I don't want it to die. It's real far. Ew, that's gross stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like curdled milk. Ah, I think that's going to work pretty well. Ew. Nope, that's not going to work. That's like curdled milk. That's kind of gross. Okay. Let's see what other color we have. We've done pink, we've done blue. Yeah, we're gonna go for a pale greenish color. That'll work. Yeah, no, I don't like green for whatever I do next. Uh oh. Somebody knocked something over. Mainly a cat. Okay. Excuse me while I pound this for a second. Ah, I got it. When I lost fails, beat on your jar. Well, we'll see how it works. Maybe okay. I need some new, uh, Obviously, I need some new. See if we still have a living cat after I get done here. I'm going to water it down a little bit. Kind of dry it up a little. But it's still liquidy at the bottom. I just don't want it real thick, so. I don't want to take up all the lace texture by making it a little too thick, so just keep adding a little water. The water's a little bit gray, but that's fine. It's going to kind of fit with the shabby kind of antique-ish feel that I'm going to want with this. That worked. Well, we'll see if Patches is still, Sarah's cat's still alive after all this. <laughs> or if Sarah has killed her. <laughs> oh, you guys. You guys and your egg jokes. So we just 
for those of you who are wondering what we're doing, we just have um, basically, you can use Mod Podge too. That's the, uh, 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 yeah, you can use Mod Podge it, to uh, attach this stuff rather than medium. Basically, Mod Podge is a medium, so you can use that to, um, I put this lace onto the egg, and then I've adjusted it with some white. Get it relatively dry. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Now I'm gonna take. Ooh, actually, I think I'm gonna. I was gonna do this with um, just just dress ink. But I think I'm gonna use the oxide ink from the frayed burlap with the sponge, just to kind of now. Highlight the lace a little bit, kind of brings the texture out, and gives it that shabby look. So then you can see the texture a little bit better. It makes it look like it's antique lace on there. So then I might take a little bit of my vintage photo, and this is just Distress Ink, maybe add a few highlighty sections as well, just to give it that color, so it runs away, that's going to give it kind of a little vintage -y look, and then I'm going to grab something else, I should grab all this before I was up, but I was digging for something else and found it. Oh God, some of the stuff I haven't dug out in absolutely forever. Grabbing some of my alcohol inks that I haven't used in squeons. Uh, let's see, what kind of color do we want with this? There's a pearl, I want that out. Well, these are some metal ones too. Oh, and I got some sporty things. There's a gold. Lake mist. Whoa! And I just want to do some stuff here at the top where I'm going to be. Doing some flowers and stuff. It's kind of cool because this is kind of going into the little crinkle crackles. I just wanted to go kind of neutralish this little willow. Whoa, hello. This is really making that lace look really cool. Maybe I want it to let it run even a little more. I wasn't planning on this much of it, but it's looking so cool. Oh, let's let it run. Oh, I like how that looks. Letting it run down. Let it dry it a little bit before I put another color on. Oh, this is looking way cool. Thank you, Lois. This is. Whoops, I'm too. Yeah, it looks really cool. It's making the lace really stand out. 
don't know if the color was probably my best choice, but you know, hey, I'm just having fun playing. So, I think that's gonna be a little grayer. Let's see what the pebble does. It's good to bust this stuff out that I haven't played with in ages. That was probably a little bit dark. That's a little bit too dark. Let's go with the pearl now. Probably the pearl, I'll probably need to shake. Pearl's not coming out very well. Let's do the gold. Where is that gold? Yes. Gold. This is really, this, it probably looks like a hot mess on camera, but it looks really cool <laughs> in person. <laughs> so, Ooh, pink sherbet. I like that color. That sounds good. Let's dry a little bit though. It really does look cool. And you're like, you guys are all like, oh, 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 okay, if you say so. Oh, my hands are a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having a good time and it's putting me in a good mood so <laughs> I haven't opened these in god knows how long Here, I'm happier with that. Add some color into it. Because then we're going to do some stuff on the top. All right, so. Dry it again. So you kind of got this lace with this colors then onto it. Because then we're going to put some moss and some flowers at the top. I'm not the most conventional Easter person, obviously, looking at these colors. Okay, let's set these aside. Get this back out again. Just kind of want to be it like kind of like I said, dry brush. So I'm just bringing out some of that texture of the lace. So that it catches it in the light. Just 
that down at the top where it's not quite dry. I'm going to try to clean a little bit of the junk off. All right. Oh my God, Susan, he's actually two and a half now. I remember when your daughter was pregnant with him. Okay, one last thing we're going to do to this one, and then we're going to add some flowers. Just because I got it out, so I want to play with it now. You know, it's like, I got out all my toys, so I'm going to play with all of them. So, I'm just going to take... Adding some glue. Not the thing to do with sticky fingers. Now I'm really sparkly. <laughs> so let's try this a little bit. So you just, this is kind of like gold foil stuff, and you just put it on, and then you got this little scrubby, spongy thing that you take and scratch off the excess. But you can do, you can stamp with the glue and make it, I'll clean it up later. I've made a lovely mess on my desk. <laughs> All right, so. He's looking cool. He needs to dry a little bit. And then we're going to put some little flowers and stuff on him. Travis Collin, but he can wait. Nope, don't need lace on the top. I'm just going to take some of this mousy stuff. Kind of make a little nest on the top. Okay. 
You guys are all going, what kind of hot mess has she made? Ow, that was really hot. <laughs> my fingers are so sticky and I have such a mess on my hands. Okay, I don't think I need more of this. It's sufficient. Okay. One, two. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty on the top of this one. This one maybe can use a little trimming of the, doesn't need quite as long of a piece of the moss. Smush them on down. Little tiny pink guys in here. I just want the pinky ones. I don't want the blue. Don't tell Lois. She already left, so she won't know that we took all the. We didn't use the blue ones. Okay. Pop some little flowers on there. One more down there. Nothing. So then he becomes a cute little, just needs a little sort of ribbony thing to hold it. This is perfect. We've got some little wire ribbon. Perfect. Perfect right in that little spot right back there. And with the wire, you can crinkle it up a little bit. And voila. Kind of a little, looks like he's just pulled out of the earth. The lace gives a lot of texture. It's got the, uh, the alcohol ink that kind of dripped and made it real earthy and then throwing a little bit of the, the sparkle on there, but it has a really earthy, earthy feel to it. And then the little pink and peachy colors. So there we go. We got, we got three done in class and the fourth one beforehand. And it's going to take me longer to clean up than it did to, to do these guys. But there's some, there's some fun and different little Easter eggs. I'll take some photos of these and put them up um, on Paper Doodles and maybe my Pinterest so that you guys can see them. So.
So, anyway. These were fun. So, there we go. Some little shabby eggs. Not your typical, rip, you know, little drop the dye in the vinegar cup. So, uh, a little bit more fun. So, um, I had a blast. It's got me in a good mood after having a bit of a, a rough few days. So, uh, you guys with your egg jokes have been pretty uh, humorous and excellent. So, oh, let me switch my... For those of you who are coming back to watch this, you can view the... Uh, I'm, my hands are a mess. Um, you can view the chat. The egg puns have been pretty funny. So... Alrighty, guys. This was tons and tons of fun, and I do thank you all for joining me here in my studio. You will need to keep an eye on um, the schedule over on my website in terms of when the next class will, is going to be. I am going to take the Mystery Book Club. I'm going to do videos for that, and I'll be working on those this week, getting that done as soon as I can, as well as The Last of the Angels will be one that I will be doing very soon as well, and it will go straight to video. It's just faster to go that way, so that way I can get more done. I do have some plans for doing, um, I think I'm going to break it into two different um, different times of the year. Um, this is my 10th anniversary of doing um, paper crafting, and so I do want to celebrate that. We had talked about doing a live event in the fall, but with everything that I've had going on recently, I just, I don't want to take that on right now. So we'll plan one, if not next year, the following year, um, to do to do a live event again. Um, but I do want to, uh, uh, you know, in-person event, but I do want to do some online events like I have done here in the last couple of years, and those are work really well. So I want to do one probably here in the spring, early summer, and then one again in the fall, another one, which, which will be different projects. And so I'm working on the ideas for that, uh, working on trying to get some of the other stuff done first. So, so keep, keep an ear out for that. Um, but I will be doing live shows, but I think for the time being, the live shows are just going to be the tags and things like I was doing or stuff like this. I just need the playtime on the live shows without the pressure of having to schedule them four and five shows out right now while I'm trying to get everything settled back in and kind of rejuvenate things. So I, uh, <coughs> I, uh. I'm just so pleased that so many of you have been enjoying doing this today. I, I had a blast as well. Now, like I said, it's going to take me longer to clean my hands and clean my workspace than it did to do these eggs. So have fun. You know, take time for yourself. And that's one of the things that I'm learning is take some time to just have some fun, even if it's five or ten minutes um, here or there or an hour um, take some time for yourself. It really does recharge the batteries. It really does help you to do other things much more efficiently when you take a little bit of time to, to reduce up. So thank you always to Joy for helping me out. And uh, also, I know Lois has already left, but I, I do appreciate greatly those who, who help me out here. Um, and more importantly, well, not more importantly, but I also very important to me is the support all of you have shown to me. And I, I just want you to know once again how much I greatly appreciate all of you who take time out to come watch my live shows, to be supportive of me, to drop me emails. Um, it means so much to me. It honestly does. So everybody have a wonderful um, evening. Have a great week. And we'll see. Um, I will announce a few days in advance when I am going to be doing a live show. And for all I know, it could be Wednesday. I, I've just got to play it by ear for a few more weeks. So anyway, everybody have an amazing, amazing week. And we will see you next time. So peace out. Love you bunches. Bye for now.